Hey there, and welcome to Rob's Custom Wood Shop. My name's Rob, and today I'm going to be building this maple and walnut chessboard with underboard storage for the pieces. To start, I go through my scrap bin and pick out the appropriate pieces of each material I want. Taking those pieces to the jointer, I flatten one face and then Using that face against the fence as a reference, I flatten one edge. Using that flattened edge against my table saw fence, I cut the boards to desired width. Using the planer, I bring the boards just slightly above the thickness I want to allow for any sanding I'm going to be doing. Next, I arrange the boards and test the joints prior to glue up. Then with a liberal amount of glue, I start the glue up. For all the glue ups in this project, I use a bunch of clamping calls just to help keep my project straight while the glue sets. Now since my boards are jointed properly, you'll notice I use a minimal amount of clamping pressure, just enough to keep the boards together while the glue sets. Now that the glue is set, I can take it out of clamps, scrape off the squeeze out, and I'm ready for my next cut. So this is a problem I've heard of, but it's never happened to me before. But my clamps with the glue have left little black dots dyed into the wood from the clamp pipe. So as a way to rectify it in the future, I'm going to use a piece of green tape over my clamps. Now since cutting my slats, I have not touched the fence on my table saw. So when I cut the opposite direction, my squares will be exactly the same size. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my miter gauge, square up one edge, and then I'm going to use the fence to rip the thin strips. Now I flip every other piece to orientate this board before glue up. Gluing this up is a little bit tricky and it takes a little bit of extra time to make sure each piece is correctly aligned with the other. And while doing that, making sure the previous piece does not move. Now that this glue is dry, I'll remove the clamps, scrape off the squeeze out, give it a quick sanding, and then I'm ready for finish. I come back out the next day to find this surprise. I do not heat my shop when I'm not working in it, and since it's winter, it gets well below freezing with very high humidity and then when I warm it up, the humidity drops rapidly and the wood moves. As you can see, I've highlighted the grain direction in yellow. I was taught to do smile, frown, smile, frown to keep my glue ups more stable. As you can see, all the grains are frowns, which brought a giant frown upon my face. So after remaking this board, smile, frown, smile, frown, and waiting a week to see if it would move, this glue up remained stable and flat. So now that I have the final dimension of my board, I can go ahead and start making the base. Now I start the milling process over again to create the base. I cut my lumber to rough length at the miter saw, then I cut them to rough width using the table saw. I take the pieces to the jointer, flatten one edge, and then using that edge against the fence as a reference, I flatten one side. Next, I run the boards through the planer to get them to just above the thickness I want. Now it's time for another glue up. Once the boards are out of clamps, I can scrape the glue off quickly and then take them over to the jointer and flatten one face. 
Using that face as a reference against the fence, I make one side perpendicular. Now I bring the boards to final thickness using the planer and trim them to final width using the table saw. For the bottom of my base, I'm going to use half inch birch, which I'm cutting to width of the table saw. Then using the cross cut sled, I square up one side and then cut it to length. After installing my half inch dado blade and sacrificial fence, I can cut the rabbits on the top and bottom of each of my side pieces to accept my upper and lower panels. I'm going to join the side pieces together using miter joints. I thought I'd try the table saw to make these and then after that happened I changed my mind and decided to use my miter saw like I always do. I use these 90 degree clamping jigs to glue up my side pieces and then set them aside to cure. With a 1 8 dado blade and a 1 16th chipper installed, I cut a grid of 3 16 grooves into my bottom to accept the dividers. Then I reinstalled my saw blade and cut a whole bunch of dividers using 3 16 panel board. I cut them all to fit, marked one, taped them together, and cut all the half laps at the same time. So to reinforce the miter joints on my side pieces, I decided to use splines. So I found a spline jig build on YouTube, modified the jig to fit my table saw, and then cut my splines. I glued in some 1 8 inch splines, and then set them off to the side to cure. Then I started working on the trim. I cut a rabbit out of some maple strips to fit over my top. Then at the router table, I give two edges a round over using a quarter inch radius round over bit. After that, I used a bandsaw to cut the splines as close as I could, next using the sander to get everything smooth. Sanding the sides and the inside of the box. I used the bottom to stabilize the piece, which turned out to be not such a good idea. Now it's time to glue the bottom assembly to the sides. After that, using glue and a lot of patience, I install the dividers. Next, add a lot of weight to hold things in place while the glue sets. Then I can move my focus to the bottom trim. I use walnut for this and I cut it to three quarters then take it over to the router table. I chose to go with a cove design but my cove bit is such a piece of crap that I have to take such small passes each time to get the desired amount removed. Now with more trips to the miter saw than I care to count I finally get the trim fitting just perfect. I use glue and three brads on each piece of the lower trim, but on the top I only use glue and just the tape to hold it in place while the glue sets. Now after a lot of hand sanding, I was finally ready for some finish. Now for the finish on this, I just use four coats of satin polyurethane. This was a really fun build and it turned out far better than I could have imagined. And though I got pretty discouraged when the first board worked, I'm glad I pushed through to the end. If you have any tips, tricks, or questions about this build, leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hammer that thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and ring that little notification bell so you never miss when I upload new content. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next project.